Welcome to Booze on the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and it's great to have you here today. We're going to make the Godfather trilogy of cocktails. Now, when I say that, I liken it unto the movies, Godfather 1, 2, and 3. Now, having said that, the original idea for those movies came from a book called The Godfather by Mario Puzo, which was released in 1969. After the success of that book, the movie was released in 1972, and then Godfather 2, of course, in 1974 give it a long hiatus, and in 1990, The Godfather 3 was released, and that actually kind of works out really good because Francis Ford Coppola, who is the director, feels the first two movies as a duology and the third one as an epilogue. Now that I've kind of gone on about the movie, which were all fantastic, by the way, we're going to start with the classic Godfather cocktail. And for that, you're going to need a stirring vessel. And we're actually going to start with a scotch. Now, many people recommend a good blended scotch. Some will even say use a single malt. However, what we do need to do is start with a total of an ounce and a half or 45 mils. Now that you've added your scotch, we're going to go to the next ingredient, which is amaretto. Now, in this case, we're going to go with the tried and true, the Di Serrano amaretto, because we know it works fantastic in this cocktail. But we don't need a lot. We only need a half an ounce or 15 mils. Now, one of the things about the next two cocktails is, of course, the ratios are exactly the same of an ounce and a half to half an ounce. Now, you will see online that there happens to be different variations of the cocktails from down to five sixths of an ounce to uh, three quarters of an ounce and up to two ounces of your main spirit. Now again, make these cocktails in a way that work perfectly for you. And for this part, because we're going to, uh, I'm going to compare how these actually work out flavor wise, I want to make sure that I use the same amounts so I have the ability to actually really do a very good comparison. So what we'll do is we'll just stir this for a good 25 to 30 seconds and you just want to make sure that you do this in such a way that your glass chills very well and you get the correct dilution. So you don't have to do it for long and you want to make sure that you're about two thirds full on your mixing glass. Absolutely fantastic. Put that off to the side. And now what we'll do is grab a standard rocks glass, take this back off, of course. And we don't want a lot of ice. We're just gonna put two or three cubes in there because we don't have a lot in here. Now you can use a julep strainer, but if you have a Hawthorne strainer, it will fit right in there absolutely perfectly. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, you just give it a try. You get immediately those hints of the amaretto and a little bit of the scotch. Mm, really good. Slightly, slightly sweet scotch, but you know what? You get that heather, you get the sweetness of the almonds from the amaretto. Absolutely fantastic. I love this stuff. Now, having said that, we're going to make this second version of this, and that's called the Godmother. So we're going to use a nice fancy stirring vessel, and we're going to go with our starting ingredients. Now, in this case, we need a little bit of vodka, so it's a total derivation. 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 Deviation. Deviation. That's the word. Anyways, having said that, it completely deviates us directly away from this, and we'll use the same amount of an ounce and a half or 45 mils. Now, after your vodka, we're going to move again back to our tried and true friend here. And this will actually give us a much sweeter cocktail based on the fact that the vodka is very neutral in flavor. So we'll use the same amount of half an ounce or 15 mils. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this about two thirds full of ice. And we want to make sure that we give mama a good stir for about the same amount of time. Again, about 25 seconds to get this all up and going, chilled and diluted to exactly where we want. So immediately just stirring this, I noticed that it's actually lighter in color. And as such, the uh, we get a beautiful difference in tonality, just visually from what we can see. So again, give it another stir. Use your strainer yet again. Grab yourself a nice fancy glass for mama. Another two or three cubes just for her. That's a big solid chunk of ice. 
And again, we just want to strain it in. Mama does look good. The godmother. Much sweeter. The uh, Di Sorano, or the Amaretto, I should say, is fold, is fold, is bold in your face, uplisted by the vodka, because you can taste the vodka just a little bit, but the Amaretto is right there to guide you into something nice, sweet, and tasty. Now, the next one we're going to make is called the Godchild. So I'll just move these over here, get this out of the way. Grab yourself another stirring vessel. He can be a plain Jane. He is, after all, the godchild. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start this with brandy. Now I'm using some St. Remy XO uh, brandy. And again, the same ratios of an ounce and a half or 45 mils. And you want to make sure that you use your favorite ingredients for these three cocktails because those three uh, ingredients that you use, uh, well, two ingredients per cocktail, I should say, will really stand out and make each of these for you. But again, we'll use half an ounce or 15 mils. And again, we're going to fill this with some ice and give it a bit of a stir. And looking at this, I really like the color. It's a little bit more amber, a little bit more dark. You know what? And whoa, uh, you want to make sure that you do everything exactly the same if you're going to make all three of these, or you can make just one at a time because you want to try them out and really enjoy each. In fact, watch the movie with one of these drinks and tell me how well they go together because you know what? Fantastic cocktails and fantastic movies, you just can't go wrong. Anyways, Having said that, uh, the difference in time frame on the movies and the difference in years with the main characters makes a huge counterpoint just like these cocktails. So again, another type of rocks glass, something kind of pretty. Just a couple of cubes based on the size of the glass and then pour it in. Now visually, this glass looks incredibly, just that little bit more appealing. The color's a little bit nicer, the shape of the glass. I'm already a fan just by the presentation on this one. Again, I get a little bit of the amaretto, but I do not get as much of it. In fact, the brandy is kind of muted in this. Really good. Oh, it's completely the opposite to the uh, Godfather itself is, it's a little bit sweeter. It's not sort of heatherish. Um, it's got some bold flavor that's been tempered by the De Serena. absolutely fantastic. Now, let me just move this off here. We'll spin this and we'll give you, of course, our rundown on three fantastic cocktails. We have the Godfather, we have the Godmother, and we have the Godchild. Each of these on their own, fantastic. Side by side, they're still fantastic. I think I prefer the Godfather, sorry, the Godchild more. It's a little bit sweeter. It feels a little bit more complex where you get a little bit more of the bold amaretto here with the Godmother. And the Godfather is the tried and true scotch cocktail where you get those scotch notes, that little bit of smoke, that little, and I'm not using a smoky whiskey, but it just kind of comes out. And you a little bit of that heather. You know what? If you like cocktails like this, take a look after the recipe card right up here.